On this episode of Modern Greaser, you're getting the full detailed history of my 1965 GTO. And as February of 2020, this car I've had for 23 years. I actually had a picture of this car on my birthday cake when I was eight years old and I grew up around this car and somehow I'm lucky enough to still own this. Growing up around this GTO as a kid had me obsessed. So obsessed that I built my very first GTO out of an old basketball hoop and wood. It doesn't look like a GTO to you, does it? Well, look closely. It has its own hood scoop. It's a freaking GTO in my book. This car started out in Cedar Rapids, Iowa from a Graf Pontiac. It eventually made its way to Rockford, Illinois, where I met up with it. So back in the late 80s, this car used to come ripping down through the countryside and I could hear it and I'd come running out to see it. So this car sat on the farm for 10 years and when I was a little kid, the vent window was broken and I'd reach my hand inside and open up the door and go inside the car and sit in it and pretend that I was driving it. I was in love with this thing. So back when I was 12 and 13, believe it or not, I was installing fences on a farm trying to pay off the student loans of the owner of this car where it sat for 10 years. On my 14th birthday, I came down the stairs to hear a little GTO playing on a radio and the keys were handed to me. So since this car sat for so long on the farm, nearly 10 years with the carburetor sitting on the passenger side floor, I began taking out the spark plugs and spraying in WD-40 into the piston cylinders. Now, was it the best thing to do? It was probably better than not doing it. After siphoning out of the gas with the bilge pump, I took the old Rochester carburetor and installed it back on the car and it fired up and was driving just fine. But there was lots of issues with it where it had holes in the floor pan, a foot by foot diameter hole in the floor pan where your feet went. So between the ages of 14 and 16, I started doing the bodywork myself. We're talking about shredded fiberglass. We're talking about sheets of fiberglass fiberglass resin and Bondo. So this was the Bondo buggy. I started doing all the body work down the side. I had giant holes. I reconstructed the fender wells and I had this thing in primer gray. By the time I was able to start driving it to high school, I had a lot of work that was put in it. I actually still have all the receipts even from when I was working on this thing back in the day. And between 14 and 16, I would take it down this industrial park and was able to drive it a little bit cruising around. So there's probably not too many 14 year olds these days that are driving four speed GTOs around, but we're talking 20 years ago, so it's been a long time. So by the age of 16, I was driving this thing through high school. I actually took it to my prom, where while we were driving it, the exhaust fell off, fell down onto the ground, out the road, open header, and the header was open right in the floorboards. So let's just say it was loud AF and it smelled terrible. When the exhaust fell off the car, it actually messed up the linkage on the four-speed Saginaw transmission, so it was stuck in first gear. And we drove this car in first gear, screaming headers all the way back. And needless to say, the French exchange student that was with us got a great American experience that day. A friend's dad approached me who actually got out of prison at the time around 1999, 2000. And he said, hey, you know what? You've taken this car to one point, but I've got lots of body shop experience and I have a feeling that I can do an entire frame off restoration on this car for $4,000. So as time went on, my friend's dad was working out of his garage. And as he moved out of a garage, he moved into a bigger garage. And then he moved from a bigger garage into a full shop where he had employees working for him, where he had multiple tow trucks. At this point in my friend's dad's career, my $4,000 was long invested into his company and it was a car that he would be losing money on. Being a college student, I had no money to put into the car, so even if my friend's dad was starting the restoration process, I couldn't fund it. So fast forward about 12 years, my friend's dad actually did a lot of work taking the car apart, working on it, but nothing really got done. Then a really good friend who approached me and said, hey, you know what? Let's see if we can apply that $4,000 as a credit to get your car back into shape. And so long story short, my friend came to me and said, hey, you know, it's gonna be like another $13,000 before we get it done. And I go, dude, I'm, I'm getting my master's degree. I really don't have that money. Let me just come put it in a box. I'll put the car in a tow truck. I'll bring it down to Florida because this restoration was getting done in Illinois. And my friend's dad said to me, you know what? You had faith that I would have a really good body shop someday and you were one of the investors in our company. You gave me the 4,000 up front and you trusted me. And he completed the frame off restoration that you see behind me for the original agreement of the $4,000. There are not too many people that hold true to that. In today's day and age, that doesn't happen. So Coachman's CCR Body Shop out of Machesi Park, Illinois, completed this restoration. So Coachman's replaced the entire floor of this car. They also replaced the entire trunk floor of the car. They also had to replace the inner fender wells. The entire tail panel had to come out of a donor car from out west. Coachman's went into Chicago and found a pair of doors off of a donor car. It had to have 
new quarters replaced on the rear. A whole new frame had to be brought in from Florida, which Denny from Coachman's drove all the way down to Florida, picked up the frame, and drove it all the way back. Installing the Tremec transmission, Coachman's actually modified the whole tunnel to accept the Tremec transmission. They had to figure out all of the right angles for the drive shaft, and it was not an easy task. Not only that, but the original agreement between Coachman's was to just give me a rolling painted shell, but they didn't stop there. They were so invested on making this car perfect, they did all the wiring, they painted the shocks, they painted the drive shaft, they put it on a complete rotisserie, they flipped it upside down, and they made sure that everything on this car was 100% flawless. And this car is 100% flawless. It is exactly what Denny Wilson had in mind when he approached me nearly 20 years ago and said, I can make this car absolutely perfect and I will put this thing on a rotisserie and I will give you a beautiful car. And he did more than that. He held up to more than his end of the bargain and they delivered a beautiful car. So in 2015, my wife and I traveled up to Coachman's to do the break-in process on the engine. And so while the car was up to operating temperature, the lower radiator hose actually blew off and it scalded my legs from the knees down, went into my shoes and I had blisters forming immediately. So after that, we'll just say it wasn't my car's best first impression on my wife. So this 1965 GTO is a VIN verified 237 GTO. Now, now this car also has what they call PHS documentation. That's Pontiac Historical Society documentation where they actually go through old microfilm and will verify that this was the, indeed the GTO package. Now in 1965, you could buy a 1965 Le Mans, you could buy a 1965 Tempest. And for $300, you could actually add on the GTO package, which is the emblem and the higher output motor and a whole bunch of other performance features on the car. This is a two-door hardtop. These cars came in two-door posts, which was having a post here and would have a metal bar that went around the window. So this car was originally dark blue and light blue interior, but I decided to go with black on the restoration. So on an upcoming episode, I'm gonna talk about all the different features that this car has. Just to keep it short for the moment, this car doesn't have the original engine in it. I'm under suspicion that the original engine was in this car, even though I was told it was a Buick 350 at the age of 14, 15, 16, I didn't know how to look up the engine numbers and I wish that I did or I had a little guidance. And when the engine was plucked and taken out to a farm, it was taken away for scrap. And I'm willing to bet that that was the original high output 389. Now this car came with a four barrel carburetor on it from the factory and it had a Saginaw four speed. The engine was professionally assembled by my stepdad, John, who despite his age, still plays with blocks. And of course, with the help of my own mother, she helped install the crankshaft. Who else can claim their mommy built their engine? I wish I was part of the rebuild process of the car, but it was all happening 1,300 miles away. If you haven't seen the episode where my mom takes this thing out and does wicked burnouts in it, then you're missing probably the best, no, you are missing the best Modern Greaser episode there is. It is my favorite. bad for your first burnout. Good job, mom. The GTO played an important part in our wedding and by the time everything was over, I think my wife forgave it for spilling hot fluid all over my legs. I'm so lucky to have this car in my life and I'm so excited for my son Oliver to be the third generation of driving this car. His shirt even says so. So in the early 2000s, my friend Mark pulled the engine out of this car on his farm and that was the last time he saw it until 2019. My friend Mark in 2019 came out and actually got to take this car for a drive and we'll just say that this car is a completely different car than when he saw it last. And not only that, Mark was a completely different person because he brought his son and his wife for a ride in this thing. By the time this car was completed, Denny Wilson had his complete body shop and very successful towing company out of Machesi Park, Illinois. And he said, you know what? I'm gonna bring that car down to you right before your wedding. And unfortunately, right before my wedding, Denny passed away and my friend DJ brought the car down, took one of their best tow trucks out of service and they were losing money on the day he left until the day he came back. And he had a car hauler and he brought this thing down to me right the week before our wedding. So 
uh, it means a lot to have really good friends and I can't say enough words for having friends and, and my friends I actually refer to them as family. I just wanted to say that this car wouldn't be here today without the coachman's family, especially Dustin Wilson who orchestrated and researched and made this entire thing happen. Without you this car would be nothing. DJ, for getting the idea of this car into your dad's head all those years ago and never giving up on getting it back onto the road. Mike Medeiros for brushing off the dust of this lost dream and making it a reality with all your talent and skill. Jeff Ferguson for your attention to detail and your amazing craftsmanship and your blood, sweat, and probably cursing. John Edwards for your painstaking assembly of the engine to your high standards of perfection and tuning and dynoing the car. And to Elbows, we all miss you for the man you were, and for the men you shaped all of us to be. Thank you for tuning in to yet another episode of Modern Greaser. Make sure you hit the like button if you like this video. Make sure you hit the like button if you dislike this video. And be sure to subscribe because I've got lots of other cool things coming at you. The Rust Oleum video that I did in the past, we're actually gonna experiment with some 2K clear and see if that's gonna bring it back to some brilliance. And we're also gonna take a look at the Mallet Supercharged video and hopefully get you guys some better quarter mile time, zero to 60 time, and some actual footage of the vehicle moving out so you get a better idea of what that Mallet Supercharger is doing in that truck because it is doing great things. So I've spent countless hours trying to retell this story to the best of my ability and I was up till one in the morning last night doing this and on my way to work I plugged my phone into my C10 and it kept trying to switch over to Pandora, switch over to Pandora, switch over to Pandora, which it never does. It always, I was trying to play Spotify, I played a song, you know, where it was like a specific song I wanted and it automatically when I was driving switched to Pandora for like the fourth time and the first song that came on was Credence Clearwater Revival up around the bend. And uh, Coachman's CCR Body Shop is uh, Collision Custom Restoration. And Denny Wilson had marks all over his tow trucks that said, Ain't No Millionaire Son. And he loved, <laughs> he absolutely loved CC, CCR. And uh, apparently, I guess you approved Denny. And that means a lot to me. So thanks again. <laughs>